Okay, this is the AtariMac.com website, and this is the home of the uh, Atari 8-bit emulator for the Mac OS X. And I actually got this thing running on my machine, but I had a little bit of difficulty getting up and running. And that's why I wanted to make this video, because you're going to see some emulation uh, videos coming up here uh, pretty soon, uh, you know, specifically for Atari. And uh, I chose this as the emulator because that's, you know, the system that I'm running. But I did have some difficulty, and I figured if I'm having this difficulty, there may be more uh, people who are having the same difficulty. So I wanted to kind of put together how I got this thing uh, working. And by following the instructions, you'll get pretty much all the way there. There's just a specific sort of glitch that uh, at least I'm dealing with. I figured some other people may be dealing with this as well. But uh, obviously the first thing that you want to do if you're going to run uh, Atari 8-bit emulation on your Macintosh is you're going to want to go ahead and download uh, this tool. This is the Atari 800 Mac X emulator. It's a terrific tool. Um, I've gone ahead and I've uh, downloaded it already. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a file like this. I've got it here on my desktop. And what you'll do is you'll simply uh, double click that file. It's a, it's a disk image. And uh, what will end up happening is it should mount it as a disk image like it's done here. It should set it here as a device in your finder. So when you go into that uh, that disk image, you know, you've got your README documentation, but you've also got this folder. And uh, what I ended up doing was I took the contents of this folder and I dragged it into uh, another directory. You could do the same thing uh, where you put that is, you know, totally up to you. Um, in fact, I think I just took this, this top level folder and dragged this into a directory. Um, I'll, I'll show you where that is. I didn't necessarily choose the best place for it. I'll probably end up moving it because I was really just trying to see if I can get it up and running. But I've got it here in my documents folder, which isn't terrific, but it does the trick. And of course, the first thing that you'll notice when you open it for the first time is that you don't have all of the ROMs that you need. Now, of course, I've already installed this, so I've got all of the, the operating system ROMs that I need. Um, you'll have to do the same thing and it'll tell you specifically what you need. I think it's about four or five Let me bring it up and, and, and get a directory listing so you can see what it is that you're gonna be looking for Hold on. It's uh, in here. If you're browsing through you find a directory called OS ROMs And here they are the 5200 ROM uh, the Atari um, basic ROM uh, the OSA and the OSB ROM and the Atari XL ROM for uh, emulating the uh, Atari 8-bit uh, home computer uh, system as well. So you'll need all five of these if you're going to want if you're going to have complete uh, emulation capabilities on this emulator. And the way to find them is relatively easy. If you just look at those file names and you Google them like 5200 ROM for example, you'll come up with results and I, if you select the first one here when you Google 5200 ROM you'll come up with uh, a link on Atari H for 5200 emulation and you scroll down and the first thing you'll see here, it's pretty much in your face, is the 5200 BIOS ROM is actually linked right here. So you can you know, do searches for the, the ROMs that you need and uh, you'll, get, you'll eventually get everything that you're looking for. Let me go ahead and bring up this, uh, this emulator and I'll show you some of the problems that I encountered that made it somewhat difficult for me. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. And I'll bring it up. And obviously to start it, you just want to click on the icon that's uh, labeled with Atari 800 Mac X. So we'll click that. That'll fire it up. And then uh, if you've got any sort of familiarity at all with, uh, with the Atari 800 system, you'll see this blue screen in the righty prompt and you'll start to feel a little bit nostalgic. Uh, so what I'll do, just to give you a sense of what I encountered, is um, I will go ahead and load up a disk image. Let me show you where those go. Um, if you bring up your Atari 800 file system, um, you know, you've got this executable icon here. Uh, you've got a handful of, of other folders as well. And if, you've, if you're downloading disk images, uh, you would want to put those in the disks folder, obviously. So that's what I've got. I've got a handful of disks that I've downloaded, um, you know, just for demonstration or nostalgic purposes. So let's go ahead and fire one of those up. You've got this control menu here. And what you'll want to do is you'll click on, on the D1 disk drive. That enables you to actually insert one of your disk images. So when you click this insert button, it's going to bring up that directory that's got all of your disk images. And for this demonstration, we'll just go ahead and select Bruce Lee. Okay, to load up Bruce Lee, 
here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this Disable Basic button. And that's kind of the same thing if you have an Atari 800 or an Atari 800 XL. Uh, clicking that Disable Basic button on this control panel is the same thing as actually holding your finger on the Option button when you're about to boot the machine. And then what I'll do is I'll do a cold start. And this is where I got really confused. I'll click on this cold start. You'll see the disk drive start to do some stuff, but then you don't see anything. So here's what I did. Uh, down here you've got the screen scale. I'm going to change that from 3x to 2x. And then you'll see right away that there is actually something happening here. I'll change it now back to 3x. So it was, it's kind of interesting in that it's, it seems that there's some sort of a... Um, a, a problem with the refresh or something when, when you actually go to load a disk image. And, and I, I swear I messed with this for probably about an hour thinking I was downloading bad ROMs or I didn't understand how the emulator worked. But that to me suggests that there's some sort of a refresh glitch or uh, some sort of a video problem. And it may be a video problem that's specific to my machine or to my operating system. But uh, I had a heck of a time trying to get past that. Once you get past it though, you know, then you see that your disk images actually are loading in the background, and I had apparently been loading Bruce Lee in the background for a fair amount of time and had no idea. So once you get past that, you'll actually see that everything is running right, and your emulator is working the way that you expect it to, and, and you're good to go. So from there, I'm able to go ahead and plug in a USB controller and, and play some games. In fact, I'll give you a quick sample so you can have a look. Okay, let me first go into the Atari 800 Mac preferences, and I'll just make sure that I've got my controller all set up. I have a USB controller set up here. Uh, it looks like that is good to go. And let me just make sure that... There we go. I'm running. There, there's the guy. There he is. So once you get going, you're pretty much good to go. Good old ninja. Here comes Mr. Green Yammo. So yeah, you get to that point, you're you're playing the game and you're styling, you're back in business. So I'll just go ahead and pause that. So that about covers that. The only thing that I want to mention is obviously if you've got uh, a USB controller that I have, you'll want to go up here to the Atari 800 Mac uh, menu, click on Preferences. That's going to bring up this uh, this tab, uh, this um, dialog box rather. You'll want to go to the Controllers tab and then make sure that Joystick One is configured to point to, uh, you know, whatever game controller you have plugged in as your USB. Otherwise, you can set it to uh, a variety of different keyboard settings. So once you once you set that up, you're actually good to go. You're you're in business and ready to play. So quick video, but just wanted to share some of the information that uh, that I kind of stumbled upon and trying to get this up and running. And then check back here soon because I'm going to have some Atari related videos here, uh, as well as some other emulation stuff coming soon. So thanks for watching. If you like what you see here, if this is something that you were encountering and you're glad that you're now able to overcome it like I am, please like this video. Otherwise, please subscribe. You'll get alerts for more stuff as it comes out. And uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video.